Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and I'm here to review the new Netflix series, Firefly Lane. And this is starring Katherine Heigl, and you have her co-star Sarah Chalk playing these two friends, Tully and Kate, who have known each other since they were in high school. They met after Tully moved back in with her, like, hippie, druggy mother, and who lived next door to Kate's family, the malarkey family. And you see their relationship over years. And I mean years because this the series takes place in like four, five, maybe six time, time periods. And within each episode can be in three or four different ones. So, right off the bat, if you couldn't tell, that one kind of bothered me. This very, it feels very much like is trying to capture that magic of This Is Us, which is working on that level in different places. I feel like that works differently because one thing that I had an issue with is, like, obviously I could tell a difference when they go back to them as teenagers because, like, they're different actresses playing them. But, like, all the other ones, it's Heigl and Chalk, and they don't, like... They have different hairstyles and stuff like that, but after a while, it can get confusing trying to keep track of, my God, who are you with in this one? Like, who are you dating or married to or broken up with or divorced or separated from in this timeline and this timeline and that timeline? It's a bit much, and I feel like if the story was told in a more of a linear standpoint, it would have been easier to follow and a little easier to connect with the characters. Because also along with the story structure, you also have that there's a lot of just melodrama. And there's, like, at every turn, something's going to blow up and over-exaggerated. And it, this, is, this show feels like a step above a soap opera, opera and a step above, like, a Lifetime original series that is over over like processed and shiny and melodramatic which is tough because they deal with some really intense trauma in this show of rape and molestation and like they go Roger Ailes it because like they're both journalists so like there's definitely a moment that's paralleling like what Roger Ailes does did when he was working at Fox News with uh, Tully and this one big executive guy, and it's just, like, really uncomfortable, and I wish that it was in a show that took these things a little more, more seriously instead of trying to be, like... It just feels overly clean and shiny and then hitting on those melodramatic points instead of, like, dealing with, like, the dark grittiness to it all. Because I never feel like this film... This show gets dark enough to handle some of the trauma that it's focusing on. But what does did keep me able to watch all 10 episodes, like Katherine Heigl does a really fine job in this film, in this show. Like Tully is a very complex and layered character. It's just, she's a bit much for me. And like, after a while, it's just like, oh my God, what next are you gonna do? And there are some moments where she really does shine though especially in this live show after she's dealing with a traumatic thing that many women have to deal with, unfortunately, and this beautiful connection she makes on her show. That was a great scene. Sarah Chalk's definitely the thing that really kept me into this show as much as I was kept into this show because, like, she, like, her relationship with her daughter and her ex-husband, who is her ex-lover and Tully's ex-lover and this person's ex-lover, and, like, this is just an overly complicated like, web of relationships that gets too much to handle after a while. And, but Chalk is so great. She's so endearing and earnest, and I just wanted to pull for her. And honestly, if the show focused more on her than Tully, I probably wouldn't have argued with it, because I feel like she's the real heart of the show, and a lot easier to like and to support than Tully is, which isn't a bad thing, necessarily, if she wasn't, like so over the top that she was kind of like caricaturist and then there's a lot of characters that feel like caricatures or like they have very specific traits and they're just there to serve this purpose and some things i feel like even though like this is a full 10 episodes of hour-long episodes there's certain things that probably should have been fleshed out a little bit more to build a bigger connection to 
And I just feel like each of these episodes just felt overstuffed with so many different things and you're trying to process and when you're working on four different timelines in a single episode with each of their own moving pieces and subplots within their main plots, there's just a lot going on and it feels overstuffed a lot. And in general, I feel like if the writing was a little more streamlined, a little tighter, I felt like I would have enjoyed the show more. But the strong performances at the front between Heigl and Chalk, I think, do enough. And then you have Ben Lawson's character, who, if, you know, just listen to him, his Australian accent saying Milwaukee a lot in the show. Like, there's a lot of moving pieces in the show. And there's definitely an audience for this. This very much feels like if you love, like, Lifetime and stuff like that, this definitely feels for you. It didn't quite work for me. I'll probably, because like I do watch things, I probably wouldn't recommend this to most people, but if I did know somebody who loved a good soap opera, like a Lifetime show, I think Firefly Lane's right up your alley. But those are my thoughts on the show. Let me know what you think, and let's talk some movies. But thank you as always for tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.